in your physics textbook. There are a lot of problems that look very similar to this. Let me explain the problem, and then I'm going to explain how they want you to solve it, and then I'm going to show you how you should solve it. And so you can solve all of these problems that can be very tedious if you don't do it uh, the best way. They can get very tedious and frustrating. So I'm going to show you how to do all of these problems. We're going to use Python to do it. We're going to use vectors. It's going to be great. It's way better than the way the book wants you to do it. So here's the problem. They'll say there's two versions of it. There's this, this artificial square with uh, three or four charges. Let's say it's three, uh, a plus 10 microcoulomb, minus five microcoulomb, minus five microcoulomb. And they want to either find the electric field at this corner, or they want to put another charge there and find the force. I'm going to do both ways. I'm going to first find the electric field, and then we can find the force. Okay, so how do you do this? How do they want you to do this? They usually give an equation like this. Oh, the electric field due to a point charge, E is K Q over R squared, where K is the Coulomb constant, nine times 10 to the ninth Newton meters per Coulomb squared. Uh, this is also equal to uh, one over four pi epsilon naught is equal to K, right? So some places they'll write it this way, some of the times they'll just say K. And so this gives you the scalar value of the electric field due to a charge. Now, the other thing is that if I want to find the electric field here due to three charges, then I would find the electric field due to this charge, find the electric field due to this charge, and then due to this charge and add them all up. But the problem is that electric field is a vector. So you have to add up three vectors. So let me just draw these three electric fields. So here I have, uh, this is a, a 10 centimeter square. Okay, so 0.1 meters on each side. So here uh, is, I'll call this the electric field due to charge one, I'll call it E1. It's a positive charge, so it'd be pointing this way. I'll call that E1. It's a vector. This is a negative charge, so this would be the electric field pointing down. It's a smaller charge, so the electric field would be, uh, I'll call that E3, and I labeled these one, two, and three. And then this one, I need to find this distance, and I need to find this vector. E2. And so here is the problem. I can find E1 and E3 if I consider this to be my x and y axis. I can use this equation to, to find the magnitude of these. And then I could say, well, E1 is the vector. This is how they would want you to write it. Uh, E1 x hat plus 0 y hat, right? Because it's in the x direction. And then this one's in the negative y direction, so I could write E3 equals uh, E3. That's just the scalar value. No, I'm sorry. It'd be 0 x hat minus E3 y hat. But now we have this problem. How do I find this one? I can find the magnitude of E2, right? I'd have to find this distance. I can do that because it's, it's, uh, it's this equilateral, it's an equilateral triangle actually. So I could find this distance, I'll call it R2, using Pythagorean theorem. Uh, and then I could find this angle, and then I could find the components of, of the, uh, in the x and the y direction, and I get that as a vector too. Uh, so let's write that as E2 is E2x, x hat, plus E2y, y hat. I'm not gonna do that, okay? Because there's a lot of extra work that you don't need to do. Um, to find, it's, it's kind of weird to even do it that way, to find the magnitude and then force it into a vector. Let's do a better way, which is to just deal with this as a vector from the get-go. But to do that, I need to just start, let's just start with how do you find the electric field due to one point charge as a vector? So here I have, uh, a, let's start with the a coordinate system. So here's my x and y axis. And suppose I have a point charge, I'll call it Q1, right there. And I wanna find the electric field at some other location right here, I'll call this, uh, that's just a point, it's just a point in space, there's nothing really there. Uh, so I can use the following equation, E, I'll call it E1 because it's charge 1, E1, and I'll use the K, K, Q1, over the vector R, this is called R, squared, R hat. 
This is a vector equation, so I don't need to find the magnitude and then turn it into a vector. I'm just going to find the vector value of the electric field. And you may think, oh, that's a crazy looking equation. Okay. Um, but trust me, it's going to work out much better. So in this equation, k, we know, q, we know, the magnitude of r, this is going to be the vector r. So I can find the magnitude of r. If, if the vector r looks like this, rx, ry, rz. I'm using this uh, notation for vectors because I like it the best. And it could be in three dimensions. It doesn't matter. Then the magnitude of that is going to be equal to the square root of rx squared plus ry squared plus rz squared. Now what about this right here? This is a unit vector. This is a vector in the direction of r uh, with a magnitude of 1. And we need that to be able to turn this scalar value back into a, an, a vector, right? Because it should be in the same direct, e should be in the same direction as r. So the unit vector r hat is defined as the vector r divided by the magnitude of r. So this is just a number. I can divide each component of this by that number and I would get the unit vector. But don't worry, we're going to do all this in Python, so it's not going to be too hard. So, but the next thing we need to do is find this vector r. So if this is my vector, I'll call this r1. It's the vector location of the charge. And let's call this vector ro. It's the vector location of the observation location. Uh, if that's true, then I know the vector r is going to be ro minus r1, right? Because if I look at this as a difference, a difference in vectors from r1 to ro, then that would just take the subtraction of those two. So if I know RO and I know R1, I can find R, I can find the magnitude, I can find the unit vector, I can plug it in here and get the electric field due to a, a point charge as a vector. Okay. Now let's go back to our problem with the three charges. So here I have, and that's just a, a point right there. Okay, the first thing I'm gonna need to do, let's call this uh, Q1, Q2, Q3. Uh, the first thing I need to do is pick an origin. It doesn't really matter where it is. Um, I'm going to pick right here. So I need to find uh, the location R1, the vector there. I need to find the location of R2. I need to find the vector location of R3. I need to find the observation location. So these are 0 0.1, 0 0.1. So let's just go. This is going to be up here. I think I can just look. It's going to have a 0x value, and its y value is going to be 0 0.1 meters. R2 is down here. It's going to have a value of 0, 0, 0, right, because it's at the origin. And it doesn't matter. You can move this around, and I, in fact, will move this around um, and show you once we get into Python. And then R3 is going to be 0 0.1, 0, 0 meters, and I'm using three dimensions too. So that's just along the x-axis. And then the observation location up here is going to be the vector 0 0.1, 0 0.1, 0 meters. So now I have all those. I do need Q1 was 10. Was it minus 10 or plus 10? I can't remember. It was 10. 10 microcoulombs, so 10 times 10 to the negative 6 coulombs. Q2 is negative 5 times 10 to the negative 6 coulombs. Q3 is also negative 5 times 10 to the negative 6 coulombs. And I, I didn't answer the question about uh, the force, right? But once I find the electric field here, then I can just say F equals Q4 times E. Once I find the total electric field vector, I just multiply by that charge I want to put there and it'll give me the force. Okay. So here's the steps that we're going to do. Number one, for each charge, Find R. Find the vector R, which is just RO minus R1, whatever, whatever that might be. Uh, we need to find the magnitude of R. Looks like we got to square that. We're going to find the unit vector for R. Um, and then we're going to find E1 using that formula. And then I do that for all the charges. And then I say E 
equals E1 plus E2 plus E3. Okay, I think we're ready to jump over to Python because Python has some ways to do all this stuff super easy. Uh, I'm gonna be using GlowScript vPython. It has vector classes in there, which makes this super great. Okay, so here we go. Um, computer, there we are. Uh, let me pull this up a little bit. Okay, so the first thing I'm gonna do, this is GlowScript vPython. I'm gonna give you the code, don't worry about it. Um, and I'm gonna use this as a calculator. So the first thing I want to do is to put k, my Coulomb constant, which is nine times 10 to the ninth. So nine E nine is scientific notation in Python. Uh, so that just tells it right there. And we don't want to put the units. Uh, if you want to, you can do it like this. Uh, so if I put a number sign, that's a comment and everything after that's ignored. I'm not gonna put any more units in here because I just want to calculate this. Now I'm just gonna enter all the data I just said. I'm gonna, so I have Q1 is 10 times 10 to the negative six. Q2 is negative five times 10 to the negative six. Q3 is, I almost told one time, put spaces, you fool. Uh, it looks better. Negative five E negative six. Uh, now the next thing I need to do is to put in my vector values, right? Where are all these things? So I'm going to say, R1 equals vector, um, and I'm gonna show you how this works. Zero, zero point one zero. I'm gonna print that. Just to show you that it works. So if I if I use this class vector, then Glowscript vPython knows that's a vector, right? And it treats it like a vector. And so I can do vector things with it. I can add vectors, I can find the magnitude, I can find unit vectors. So that's that's great. Now I'm going to say R2 is equal to vector, this is just the stuff I said, 0, 0, 0, we can change these later. R3 equals vector uh, 0 0.100, 0, 0, right? And then RO, make sure you don't put 0, you can put 0, just got to do it all the time, is 0 0.1, 0 0.10. 0. Okay, now let's calculate the electric field E1. So the first thing I can do is to calculate, I'm just gonna call it R and we'll reuse it, okay? And then we can reuse the variable, I'll print it out and show that to you. So let's say R equals uh, RO minus R1. I'm gonna print that. I'm gonna say R equals, just so you can see, R, and I even put the units. And now let's run that. And so it, I, I mean, it's pretty easy to see what R is. Uh, for, we already said what it was, it's 0.1 in the x direction, that makes sense, but we get the right answer there. So that's good to check. Now I can find um, the magnitude of R. Now in Python, there's a built-in function. I can say, I can call this, uh, I'm just gonna print it, print. Uh, let's do it like this, R equals, the magnitude of R, there's a built-in function called mag, and if I put in my vector R, it will return that, and let's just print that out to see that it works. We already know what the magnitude is, right? It's 0.1 because the other components are zero, and that worked, okay? Now I can do the same thing for the unit vector. There's a built-in function, print uh, r hat equals norm r, uh, that's the function, and it has no units, and this should have a, a unit vector of one, zero, zero, because it has a magnitude of one, and it's in the x direction, I know what that should be. And that's what I get, okay. So now I can actually print, I can do my whole calculation for E1. E1 is K times Q1 times norm R divided by mag R squared. Squared in Python is star star. And let's print that out. Print E1 equals E1 newtons per coulomb. I'm gonna get rid of these because we don't really care. And there's your electric field due to charge one. We could have calculated that easy. That I already said that was the easy one to do. Now I just need to do the same thing for the other two charges. So the first thing I'm gonna do is to uh, calculate the new uh, R, actually I could just copy this. Let's copy this whole thing. And let's just change this to I wonder if this changes to two. 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 Now I'm going to be using R2 instead of, those R's are the same. I re, 
I renamed, I reassigned that value R. I'm reusing that variable. You could do that. There's nothing wrong with that. And this is going to be E2, E2, and let's run it. There you go. That one was the hard one. Remember, that was the one at the angle. It, and it's pointing this. You see the X and the Y components are the same. That, that should be the true because it's at a 45 degree angle. Uh, and it's both down in, and to the left. Okay. So now let's do charge three. And you could do this with a function or something like that. We don't have to do that. All I have to do is change these to threes. Three. 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 Let's run that. And this is another one that we could do uh, easily. There you go. It's in the negative y direction. We knew that, right? Now I can find the total electric field E equals E1 plus E2 plus E3. That's it. Print E equals E. And there's my total electric field. Now maybe maybe they want the magnitude of that. Maybe that's fine, right? Well, I can print. I can find that. So I can say print e equals mag e. I can just take the magnitude of it, and it'll still be in newtons per coulomb. And there you go. Uh, so now one more thing. Let's find that force. So I'm going to say Q4 is 10 microcoulombs, e to the negative 6. And then I'll say F equals Q4 times E. And then let's print F equals F newtons. And then we can do it, we can print the magnitude of it too, because that's what these books want. I don't know why, it's kind of contrived. Uh, equals mag F in newtons. There you go. There's the force as a vector. There's the force as a magnitude. But here's the beauty thing, right? I can go ahead and change these values. What if, what if that's only a negative 1 ne uh, times 10 to the negative 6? It's a harder problem because things aren't balanced as much. But here, I just rerun it. Done. That's it. Right? I'm already calculated all the things. I can move this uh, to uh, 0.3. I can put it wherever I want. I can't put it everywhere I want. If I put it at the same location as the observation, then you'll get uh, you'll be dividing by zero and you'll get an infinite value. So, but let's put this back to 0.1. Put it back the way it was. I'm going to save this. Put this back at negative five. Uh, and let's save it as a name. Um, every e problem. You like that? And I'm going to give you the code. There you go. That's how to solve every single one of those problems that have here's it could be in a triangle, it could be anything. All you have to do is find the charges, find the values and where you want to find the electric field, and then just do it as vectors, and it's way easier every time. So I hope that helps. Uh if it doesn't help, it's not my fault. Uh I don't know what else to say. Actually, those problems shouldn't even be in the book, they're kind of silly anyway. But I want to help you solve those problems, and there you go.